Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now today, I, I kind of wanted to talk about uh, something that I've touched on a, a fair few times in the past, but not so much recently. Um, and that's the, the whole uh, issue that we're having with identity politics in the world at the moment. And uh, th this comes from a discussion I was having the other day with two or three people, all separately. They all came to talk to me about stuff that related to it all at once, which was interesting um, and a lot of fun. But um, I just wanted to bring some thoughts to you guys from this. Um, most prominently, the, the fact that identity politics and kind of, by extension, also kind of cult of personality type politics and populism um, are, are kind of symptoms of the of, of our society of the, the various societies that we're connected to of the the global um, controlling bodies even uh, like the UN or NATO or whatever else um, all having this bit of an identity crisis at the moment you know we, we um, have so much going on in the world at the moment and all of the identity politics, all the divisiveness, all of the if you're not part of our tribe, then you're terrible and vice versa. Or if you're a, a figurehead for a group of people, even if you don't necessarily agree with them, then you're terrible. Um, all of those kind of things. It's it's indicative of how our society, both on a global level, on a, on a national level, um, we just don't really know who we want to be anymore. You know, in the past, there have been specific us versus them. There have been the enemy nations rather than, than a group of people spread across many nations who are basically more criminal syndicate than warring army. Uh, and yet that's who the fights are with these days. You know, um, there are very few places where it is an entire nation, with the possible exception of kind of North Korea directly, um, who, who even they more recently have been trying to, um, or have been at the very least opening up to other people, trying to, to negotiate, talk them down, try and work things out a little bit more. Um, although how that ends up, we'll still have to see. But it's, it's we've got, we no, long, no longer know who the enemies are, uh, if there even need to be enemies. And so you've got this these splits in various places between traditionalism and, and progressivism, these splits between liberalism um, and, and conservatism, uh, between libertarianism and authoritarianism, between globalism and kind of uh, national insularism. Uh, and all of these things just suggest that we we don't know where we want to be. Now, I've talked about cultures in structures before, and mechanisms within uh, organized bodies and social bodies before. And one of the things that stands out is that it's always the people at the top that decide the path to walk. Yeah, it's the leaders. And we get frustrated with our leaders because they're not very good leaders. And them not being good leaders is the uh, part of the cause for some of the issues that we're seeing at the moment. They're not unifying people. They're usually arguing between people and trying to drive those divisions wider to try and win elections, not to see the best for the country. They are um, doing things that are counterproductive or contradictory or hypocritical. And as a result, it causes confusion. Um, there is a focus on following the right person and not following the right policy. So there's a, a mess of things going on there where it causes conflict and confusion. And as a result of the conflict and confusion, that's where we get people trying to, because they can't define this big mess that they live within, they try to define themselves and the people around them. Because them and the people around them is easier for them to visualize, easier for them to to analyze, examine, pick to pieces than trying to, for instance, in my country in the UK, trying to break down the inclinations and the the full breadth of 64.1 million people, um, trying to subdivide them, trying to work out who's doing what, why they're doing this, why they're doing that, why they listen to this person over this person, 
how their lives function and how that's that's kind of put things across to them, whether or not their opinions and, and, and things like that are supported enough to be valid or whether or not that they, they should be uh, completely discounted because there's no evidence for them other than them just whining, uh, whether or not it's a split between old and young, whether it's a split between men and women, whether it's a split between various uh, racial demographics or, or uh, class demographics. You know, it, it's so hard to try and visualize and work out all of those different things. And yet, you know, it still comes down to looking at, at the situation and needing to make some sense out of it. That's that's why uh, religions were formed. That's why myths and legends uh, were, were created. That's why there are common threads among all the stories that humans have told throughout the ages because we need to make sense of things. You know, we see this in animals even. Animals will try and make sense of things. That the, the, the trend in kind of memes that's going around the internet at the moment where you've got people tricking their pets into believing that they have disappeared and the pet's getting freaked out and trying to see where they've gone and work out where they've gone. You know, it's, um, it's one of those things where, you know, all animals try and understand their environment. And sometimes that's very hard. You know, we're all born, regardless of species even, we're all born with sensory um, capacity to understand what's around us. And some stuff is just really hard to understand. And so when that doesn't happen, we make stuff up to fill the gaps. We, we break stuff down or we, we focus on the, the things that we can actually deal with. And in making stuff up, that's fake news. In breaking stuff down, that's deconstructivist thinking, which isn't always the most con most beneficial and useful. When you pick apart something, looking for something all the time, then yeah, you're always going to see, for instance, racism wherever you look, or sexism wherever you look, even if it doesn't actually exist there because you're too focused on breaking something to find something, even if it's not there. Um, and then looking kind of at the the uh, kind of looking at the people around you, looking at the environment that you're in and the things that you're doing within that environment, it's a case of then you're going, right, so these people that might love me, might care about me, might have been friends for years, oh, they've said one thing, they've espoused one idea, they've worked with one group of people, and now they're the worst, beyond the worst. And you, you fight them, you fight your friends, you fight the people that want to help you, want to support you, you argue with them, you, you fight tooth and nail um, just to, to try and get them around to your way of thinking, even though your way of thinking might not have the support that you think it does. You know, And you see all of these things compound into then mob mentalities across things like social media with Twitter mobs, or where you have people groups of people going home and harassing people that they disagree with who have done ne not not really done any harm necessarily but they just said stupid things or things that they don't like and so they go and mob them when they're just out in the supermarket out having lunch you know it's not a healthy way for society to be and it's not a healthy set of symptoms to be seeing as a result of this this um societal confusion where we, we are having this identity crisis as a planet, let alone as individual nations and groups of people. So how could this all be improved? Well, we, the way it, to, it could be improved is by better leadership. Um, because whilst trickle-down economics doesn't work, as I've said before, trickle-down culture does. The people at the top decide the culture, and then it's through the people that they operate with, through the way that they... They show things by example, lead from the front, um, are resourceful and imaginative, creative, and, and are, are, are straightforward with people, honest, truthful, have uh, innate integrity. All of these things um, kind of all wrap up into a leader that could then potentially unify people as opposed to ripping them apart, um, get people on board instead of continuing to fight all the time. You know, there, there have been issues at times, like I, I went through the manifestos for the last UK election and the majority of, of the, the manifestos were basically the same. 
and yet you still had all those people who were basically arguing for all the same points, just fighting amongst each other, weakening their own side, weakening their own arguments by just you're 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 not wearing the right colour, you're not agreeing with the right people, you're not following the right person that we've put forward, and so therefore we're going to continue to fight you. It it all it all it ever did was and all it ever does is cause more problems, more weaknesses to be exploited. More weaknesses that, that cause collapse, cause further disagreements, further arguments and a further breakdown. You know, we're having this identity crisis at the moment and we're seeing all these things happening as a result. If this goes on for too long, then, you know, identity crises can lead to breakdown and breakdown on the level that these problems are occurring would be disastrous. The amount of trouble that we're seeing in places like the United States, Canada, the UK, Europe, and then seeing how um, negative some of the impacts are already being. Brexit, with all of its craziness around that and the terrible things that are coming out of that. Trump, with some of his really terrible policies and the things that he's causing... Uh, the hardship that he's causing for people within the states, uh, the the mobs and protests uh, that have, have become violent, the the people who are being uh, constantly bullied and harassed in various ways. You know, it it all leads up to uh, a breakdown if a crisis isn't dealt with, resolved. And that breakdown, considering the countries, the things that are at stake in, in regards to livelihoods and hardship that people could experience if these things aren't dealt with, you know, it's it's troubling and it's a problem. And it's it's something that, that you know, most, all of the conversations I was having the other day kind of rolled to this point of, of yeah, we're kind of up shit creek unless people at the top sort their, themselves out and actually start leading instead of just trying to lead the fight from the back, I might add, because that's the kind of politicians and leaders that we have at the moment. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys, because obviously you guys are, are out living all of your different lives. And as I said, it's hard for, to, to visualize all of the, the facets of large populations, which is why people focus on the smaller things. Now, I personally go back to statistics, go back to the information from in the UK, the Office of National Statistics, surveys, research, stuff like that, that I've brought to you guys at times. Um, but it's it's still hard to dissect all of that or understand it when there are just so many people involved. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts, um, you know, because I'm not going to be able to reach out to all of the 64.1 million people within my country or the 7 billion people worldwide to get their thoughts in full. I'd love to hear any thoughts that you guys are willing to offer on the state of the world at the moment and where this could lead. But anyway, guys, if those are the thoughts, those are the ideas that I wanted to bring forward today. I hope you found them interesting. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care.